Greetings folks, this is an XUAV Mini Talon and this is an XUAV Mini Talon box but what came in this box was not a Mini Talon it was a Talon Pro or probably better known as a Mini Talon 2 and here we are you can tell it's different by the shape of the fuselage that looks more like a Goblin fuselage than a, than a Mini Talon I think uh, but this is an update to the classic and beloved Mini Talon, which has been around for probably seven or eight years and uh, is just the classic FPV long range flyer and camera carrier. Um, I've had a couple of them. Uh, it's a brilliant plane. I don't actually fly it very often for some reason. If I didn't have all these other planes, I probably would fly it a lot more. But uh, yeah, here we go. We've got a new version. Very interesting. There are a few changes. If we look at the vertical stabilizers or the V-tails, they are shorter and sort of wider than the original. Let's bring it up here and give you a proper comparison anyway. So there you go, you can see the difference in size between the vertical stabilizers. The wings are a different shape as well, slightly. Square, we have a squarer tip on the Talon Pro rather than the original Mini Talon. Area seems to be pretty much exactly the same. A little bit more wingspan, actually. Yeah, we've got about that much more wingspan. Size of the aileron is a little bit smaller, a little bit deeper, but a little bit smaller. And we have a different system of hatches on the top as well. Front hatch there gives you access right up to the, into the nose, whereas this one, uh, it's I've actually had to cut my own hatch on there to get access into the nose to put the battery as far forward as possible which is what I like to do and this central hatch here nice big open area uh, there will be a spar going through this spot here and this spot here uh, but really great access in for flight control boards and things like that compare that to the original which has this long narrow hatch um, which had to be strengthened there it will be very interesting to see how the new one operates. Mini Talon is uh, one of the most capable, efficient uh, and great flying FPV planes around. A few stickers, not too keen on the font. I'll put them on for the Maiden, but then I'll probably pull them off like I normally do and do my own paint scheme. We have uh, a couple of spars that will go in the wings, I'm guessing. This is the joiner maybe, and that's a sort of smaller joiner there smaller spar. Get some pieces of elastic, some very, very nice looking control horns. They look really sturdy, wide base, everything uh, that a control horn for foam should be. That's impressive. Little push rods, few velcro strips, uh, ball joint ends for the control horns, which is very nice. Uh, various plywood motor mounts, few more bits and pieces and uh, there we go. Now let's have a look at the instruction pamphlet. There we go there. It says the CG is 65 millimeters back from this point here, 65 millimeters back, which is about where I ended up flying the original Mini Talon. Uh, if you load these things up a fair bit and they're nice and heavy it's probably better to put the CG a bit further forward so that it's not going to tip stall and roll over when you try and launch it. So uh, 1400 millimeter wingspan so it is a little bit bigger 830 millimeter length uh, 30 decimeter squared wing area takeoff weight 1500 to 2.5 kilograms um, I think my original I had it down to 1100 grams so it is quite versatile with the amount of weight that it can carry one of its great points. Power system 28 series, whatever that is, 40 amp ESC. Recommended 17 gram servos and 12 gram servos. And uh, that is about it. Few more differences. The original had plywood sort of center section there, uh, bracing for the um, spars and it had carbon fiber strip reinforcing down each edge as well and it's, it's quite a bit narrower than the Talon Pro or the version 2. 
I notice the motor mount is all external, it doesn't have a shroud which is great, I don't really uh, think that's necessary, you might as well have the motor out in the breeze, keeping it cool. A couple of different options for motor mounts, the disc or the butterfly shape, unless that just goes in there like that, Come on, that, might, that might be the way it goes, we'll work it out anyway, it's up to you the way you build it, anyway you can sort of come up with your own solutions. The hinging on the rudders is sort of on one side, whereas on the original it's sort of centre hinged, I suppose. Doesn't make a lot of difference, I don't think. Ailerons are quite small, but uh, seriously, it's not an aerobatic plane. You don't need enormous control surfaces. I think that's going to be just fine. Uh, probably need to reinforce those hinges somehow. Spar channel here. Uh, there we go. We've got a clamp in there. Oh, not, I like that. like that idea. It means you can unclamp it and pull the wings off through that little hole there. Okay, let's put it together. couple of little mods I'm going to do uh, with the tail servo as you can see this particular servo cutout uh, is quite restricted on the top so I may need to cut out a little bit of extra foam here so it's not binding at all the servo wire comes out through here and then goes in this hole straight in and then down so that means that when the tail is glued into this spot here uh, the servo wire is going to be trapped and probably glued in as well and there's no way you'll be able to get it in and out to swap a servo so what I'm going to do is just sort of slice out a little bit of extra access here so that the um, this clear uh, run for the servo cable to go in and out should I need to change it later on and that's not going to compromise strength or anything like that that's just going to make it uh, better for the future. So now, yeah, now we can actually just poke the servo cable through there. So that's giving me the right amount of throws, I think, just guesswork, but I've got it on the second hole from the end, so a fair way out, that's a reasonably long servo arm, outer hole on the uh, elevator and I did have to cut out about an extra five millimeters along the top there.
they have provided this piece of elastic to hold the hatches down. Um, I've never seen this idea before. You poke it in there, put some glue there, stretch it over, put some glue on the other side, and that sort of piece of elastic is there permanently. Then you have to sort of squeeze the hatch in underneath. I don't know if I like that idea. I'll, I'll follow the instructions and use this and we'll see how it goes, but uh, I think I prefer to have it hinged at the front and maybe magnets at the back, but we'll see how it goes anyway. So the motor is uh, the one that comes from the Dart XL enhanced version, that's the Sunny Sky 2216 1300 KV with an 8x6 prop, uh, 40 amp ESC, 3S, uh, sorry a 4S 3300 in the nose, needs a little bit more nose weight, like uh, about the weight of a, a DJI Air unit on the nose to balance it at 65 millimetres. So the weight at that, yeah, unit weighs 71 grams. Talon Pro weighs right on 1100 grams. So say 1180 grams is the minimum weight, um, but I'm going to fly it at that. That should be nice. I can easily put another uh, 4S. 3300 in there, two of them side by side, that brings it up to about 1300 grams. I found as I was putting it together the foam is softer than the original Talon, unfortunately, Mini Talon. Uh, you can quite easily dent it and very very easy to cut so uh, that's not an improvement I think, it's, um, it's a little bit softer. Might be a candidate for laminating I think, seeing it's got a nice straight edge there, it'll be easier to laminate the wings. The body won't be too bad, it's got nice smooth curves, that should be okay.